We've all been there, right? You've happened upon this amazing location with some of the most stunning landscapes that would look breathtaking from the sky. Of course you've packed your drone. The sun's about to set with the most beautiful sunset and you do your final check on drone assist only to discover it's in a yellow area. Oh, what's that about? If this has happened to you, then this video will help you understand what you need to do. I'll explain what you need to do to fly in these areas legally and how to navigate any awkward questions from an overzealous ranger that might happen upon you and your drone flight. While we're here, let's also take a look at those other yellow areas that have recently popped up. Yes, the smaller airfields and runways and how to be safe and legal in those too. Before we get into it, if you're into flying drones and flying legally but want to know how to fly in more areas, this is probably the channel for you. I'll try and explain in simple terms and in the shortest time I can how to fly safely. Firstly, all yellow areas are warning areas and there's no specific law against you flying in those areas. So let's have a look at one of these triple SIs in drone assist. Here's one that happens to be on the coast, but there are lots inland too. And there's no specific law about flying within you them. You could, however, be breaking the law by flying within a triple SI and disturbing wildlife. The law breaking part is disturbing wildlife. And that's the same wherever you fly. If you disturb blue tits nesting in a box on your house, you'd still be guilty of the same thing. So it's not necessarily about the location. <laughs> Yellow triple SI zones are there for your information. Some are there for protection of birds, some for invertebrates, others for geological features, plants maybe, or even for sea life. Okay, we're unlikely to cause any issue to geology, sea life, or plants. That's unless you plan on mowing an area to use as takeoff and landing zone. In most cases, that leaves the birds. If you click on the zone in Drone Assist, it'll take you to the page that's specific to that area. Click on the citation, and then you can read the detail to why it's been designated and triple SI. In this instance, it's from nesting birds, some on the cliffs and some in scrubland. Now, of course, birds tend to nest between about March and July. So you could just avoid the area for that time. But here's what I'd do. I always avoid flying close to cliffs or close to scrubland or bushes. And of course, trees, but not just because of the birds. Which is mostly where birds will nest anyway. Give yourself at least 10 meters, but preferably more from these areas. If you see birds fly up when you take off, you've clearly disturbed them, so you wanna be more careful next time. If you see birds that start to take an interest in your drone, then move the drone out of their way. If they continue to take an interest, then land. I did a video specifically about this one. It's in the description. I use this approach wherever I fly, regardless if it's in a triple SI or not. I would suggest you always fly cautiously and as far away from wildlife as you can. If a ranger or anybody else approaches you, you now have the information to answer their specific questions. Remember, a landowner can ask you to leave if you're flying from their land and they don't want you to. So lastly, let's take a look at the yellow runway areas. These are just a warning and not a legal restriction zone. There may be an increased risk of manned aircraft in that area. It might be small planes, gliders, micro lights, even model aircraft. Think about what you would do if you suddenly had another aircraft flying near your drone. It's actually something worth practicing now and then, so you'd know what to do if that happened. In most cases, it's just to reduce your height and bring the drone back to you. The VLOS rule may be inconvenient at times, but it's there to keep both other air users and your drone safe. Remember, it's always your responsibility to avoid other aircraft, and this is why we have this rule. So right now, nobody is really flying beyond VLOS legally. Who knows if this will change if companies like Amazon get to use drones for deliveries. However, I will cover that in a future video if and when it happens. So please remember to hit that subscribe button and the ding bell too. While you're there, if you found the video enjoyable or useful, please give us a thumbs up. <laughs> and in return, I'll try and keep giving you good information in a shorter form as I can, so we can all fly in more areas safely. Thank you so much for watching, and here's another video you may find really useful.